Welcome to the new home office. Well, this is going to be the home office, but first there's one very important thing I need to do, which is to add an ethernet cable into this room. I like to have a solid dedicated internet connection right to my router so that I have the best speeds possible. So the very first thing that you need to do is decide where you want that and if it's going to be possible. So here in this room, I have two options. I have this wall, which would be a good fit, but it is an outside wall and it just might be a little bit harder to get to or I can come over here to this wall, and this is actually connected to another room, so I could just route two cables at the same time and add ethernet ports into both rooms, and this just is a little bit easier to access. So that's where I think I want to put this. Now the next step is deciding if this is even possible. Now every single home is going to be different. Uh, my house is the second story and we need to route this into the middle of the first floor. So that's where all my network equipment is and that's where it needs to go. Now there's three different directions in which I could go to route this cable. One is I could send this up to the attic and then go outside and all the way around the house to the back and in through where I've already done some other network ports. Now that would require some outdoor rated cable, a lot of it because it's gonna to have to go all the way around the house and it uh, just wouldn't look very nice being outside on the siding. So I don't want to do that. Another option is I could go uh, beneath this floor into the garage and route it through the garage and somehow put it into the room again the wires are going to be seen, I would need outdoor cable, and I just don't want to do that. Now the third option is I go up to the ceiling here, into the attic, and then I go over onto a wall, and then down through the wall into the electrical room where I have my network system. So I think that's going to be the best way to do this. So the first thing we need to do is head up to the attic to make sure that would be possible. All right, so coming in here, I found where I want to go down. This is a little uh, exhaust that goes down to the uh, furnace room. And so I figure if I drill down here through the wall and in, but sometimes you luck out and I found this coaxial cable. It's currently not attached to anything. I guess I could put an antenna or something in here but we found this coaxial cable goes straight down into the room. So what I can do is I can use this as my pole wire and I can attach my Cat6 cable right onto that and then use that to pull it down right through. Next, let's talk about network cable. So here I have some network cable. Um, this is what I have in many of the rooms in my house. And right here, you can see on the side, it says Cat5e. So this is kind of an older generation, but this does support up to 1000 megabits per second of 100 meters length. So this is actually done really well, but we want to upgrade and future-proof the home a little bit. So is what I'm going to be using today is Cat6. So Cat6 can support up to 10,000 megabits per second or 10 gigabits per second connection speed up to 100 meters in length. That's 330 feet. So I could essentially use two cables from this box and I would still get it to work. So is what we're going to do is I'm going to take this end and I'm going to pull it up into the attic with me and then I'm going to push it down one end and then once we have that set, then I'm going to get some extra length and cut it and put it down so that we can then wire it here into the room. Now I do like this big box because it gives me plenty of room to deal with, but if you know how much you need, you could buy a smaller size. And then some tools you will need is, I recommend some electrical tape to tape this up, and then also some fish wire. So here I have these poles here that I'm able to uh, simply pull it through, depending on how much you need. This can be extended, and then it also comes with different hooks that you can attach so that you can uh, easily grab onto something and it glows in the dark and it's really cool. So let's go ahead and run this cable line. 50, 55, 100. All right, we're gonna call that good. So I'm actually going to take two cables, put them together, and then I'm going to kind of splice them with this coaxial cable, electrical tape them up, and then they'll be ready to pull through. All right, give it a pull. Awesome, okay. Let me know when you see blue. 
All right, that's it. Okay, thank you so much. So here in the network room, my wife actually found the cable I was pulling on right here. And so then all she had to do was pull it down and the cables came right out here. And I did a little bit of rearranging and I move the network cables up there and you can see they come down right over here. So I just need to add some RJ45 data plugs to them and then I can plug them right here into our switch. And then once that is complete, I should have a thousand megabits per second up in the new office. So what if I didn't have the coaxial cable there? Well, this is what I would have done. So right here at the top of this vent, I would have kind of drilled in the corner here. And then is what I would have done is send down the glow rod. And then right here, I would have drilled a hole up and just kind of moved the glow rod around until it went through. Then I would tape the cables onto the top and then pull them through. All right, now the hard part is out of the way. The next thing is to route this to the bedroom. Now for the cable runs, I tried to route them where they wouldn't be stepped on if I came back up here. And then I also tried to bury them in the insulation to give them a little bit of protection. Um, but other than that, didn't do too much else. And now we need to find the top of the door frame. I only have like 30 inches of insulation we need to go through to find that. All right, there we go. When we have sheetrock next to this two by four, that means we are on top of the wall that we want to go in. Now, if only I knew where this came down, that'd be a real big help. All right, so it's going to be about, I think two feet right off this wall. So we're going to go down here and drill. And there is our hole in the top of the wall. Now I'm going to take my glow rod. I'm then going to tape on the two cables and put it through. And I'm just gonna go until I hit the bottom of the floor. After removing the glow rod, you may want to use some spray foam insulation if the hole is too big. Now that we have our cable in the wall, the next thing is to cut a box for the ethernet port. Now you just need to use a low voltage box like this since it's not an actual outlet or anything like that. So I'm going to trace this out. Looks like I drew it a little too low. So we're gonna draw it a little higher and then cut that out with my sheetrock saw. Now this low voltage box just has these four little holes. You put the pencil dots in there, connect the dots and cut it out and it works every time. Oops, there it goes. And if you're lucky enough, when you reach your hand in, first try <laughs> and we have our cable <laughs> yes so I'm gonna be using one of these on the other side which I can do now or I can just store it on the wall for later and then the other one we're going to make a box right here and wire that next the next part is to wire the connections now there are two different ways in which we're going to do this one is we're going to um, add a network jack here so that we can then plug in a cable into the computer and then we're going to terminate the ends at the other end that can plug directly into my switch. So first, let's start with adding the jack. So I'm actually gonna just stick one of these in the wall. We'll get that later on the other side. And now we're going to put this into a box. Now, when you purchase a keystone, sometimes it will come like this where it has a little punch down tool um, that's pretty easy to use, but I did pick up this other one, but it makes it a little easier to get the wires all the way in the keystone. So first with the crimper, I'm gonna get a nice clean cut and then I'm going to strip the ends here. So here we're just going to untwist these a little bit and in here there's some little string. I am just gonna cut that off. And so is what we're going to do is I'm going to then um, place each of these now that I have these threaded cables undone. I'm going to place them through this and then I'm going to punch them down. Now there are two different standards for this. So you have the A standard at the top or the B standard at the bottom. Now I've been using B standard in my home. And the most important thing about this is if you use B here, you need to make sure you're using B on the other end so that all the wires are talking correctly to the other cables that you're going to use. We're gonna start with the orange white and then orange. And I'm gonna go ahead and punch those in. Now this tool does have one side that is a little blade, so it's going to cut. 
and then this is going to punch it down all the way. And you can just twist these off. Let's do the other side. And now we're going to snap on the top plate of the keystone and then snap it into the wall plate. Screw it on. Boom, we now have a network jack. Doesn't work yet, but we have one. Okay, the next step is I'm gonna show you how to terminate the end of a cable, which will create a cable here, and then we'll go do that in the basement and plug it into the switch. To terminate the end of our cables, we will need a crimper, and then I'm using these pass-through data cables that make it super easy to use. So first we need to decide how long of a cable we want. So this is just going to go from the jack to my computer. So I'm gonna make probably a six foot cable here. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut this cable and I'm gonna clean up the other end as well. All right, now I'm going to strip some cable off of each end. And with these pass-through cables, it doesn't really matter how much you strip off, just strip off enough to work with. So that's probably good. I could even do a little bit more. And trim the fibers. And for this, we're going to follow the pattern that is here on the side of the crimper. So there you see that we have the A pattern and the B pattern. And one thing I like about this crimper is it has those right on there and it also has them upside down. So whichever way you are placing the cable in so you can double check before you do crimp it. So here's what we'll wanna do is we'll wanna uh, line these up so we have the brown on this side all the way over to the orange and white and then we'll place it in through the pass-through data cable. So here I'm going to first unwind these. Then I kind of like to give it a little wiggle, not too firm, um, just to straighten them out a bit. Then I'm going to kind of make sure that they all line up here at the end. And then sometimes since the ends are so uh, wobbly here, I'm gonna give it a little trim. Just like that. Next, we're going to take our RJ45 Cat6 end, and we gotta make sure that nothing gets twisted while it goes in there. So again, kind of need to line these up a better. I'm gonna give it one more trim. All right. Okay, now that we have our nice clean end, I'm going to double check the pattern. Looks good. And now I'm gonna slide on the RJ45 cable. All right, once we slide it in there, I did have to work it a few times, but the pass-through cables are really cool because then it slides right through so that I can get the cable kind of here at the end and then it goes right in there. And then it gives you the chance to even double check one more time, making sure you have everything in the right place. Then we are ready to crimp the cable. And so for this, we're going to stick it right through there, just like where we lined up the different patterns there. We're gonna stick it right in there, push it in all the way and crimp. And there it even trimmed the ends right there for us and we have a perfect end of our cat six cable so now i'm going to go ahead do the other end double check the wiring there we go trim those up and now we have our cable here that we can plug into the computer so let's head down to the network room and terminate the other ends Now, if I would have labeled these, I would know exactly which one I should be using, but since eventually I'll wire them both, I'm just gonna go ahead and do both of them now. And after doing four of these, I almost have the pattern memorized. Brown, brown, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, orange, orange, white. Looks good. Place on our plug. Okay. And now let's go ahead, test it out. If it is working properly, I will see a green light flashing down here showing that I am receiving that thousand megabits per second connection. So here I'm going to be using my Chromebook. Right now I'm getting 71 over Wi-Fi and then I'm going to be using my Anchor 7-in-1 dongle to test this out. So let's go ahead, plug that in there and then plug in the network cable here. It says ethernet is connected. We got our white light flashing there with the orange. And over here, it's showing one gigabit per second, 1.1 actually, which is pretty awesome. I pay for 1,000 
megabits per second, so which is one gigabit per second. So there we go. Everything is working great. I'm definitely ready to move the computer into here and to start working. And there we have the green connection. So everything is working great. And if you're wondering how I have my setup here, so this is my modem. This is where the fiber is coming into my home. I have it plugged directly in to my Google Wi-Fi here. And then I have a cable coming into the switch so that then all of the devices coming into the switch are then receiving the connection without needing to use the Wi-Fi. But the router comes before the switch so that it can route all the information. Now that my computer is set up and the network cable is connected, let's go ahead and do a speed test. And for this, I'm just going to head to fast.com. You could also use speedtest.net, but instantly here we see that I am now getting 920 megabits, 930 megabits per second of my download speed. And if I hit show more info, it's actually going to show my upload. Now that's one thing that's really important to me because of how much I need to upload to YouTube. And so now I am ready to get to work here in the new studio. So this is how you add a new network cable into your home so that you can wire it from your router or your switch right to the new location where you want a dedicated internet connection. So there were a lot of details in this video. So if you have any further questions, please let me know in the comments below. And I'm sure a lot of you out there know a lot more about networking than I do. So if you can help make sure my answers are correct, uh, please help out down below. And if you want to use some of the tools that I talked about today, I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you also wanna see any videos where I added my switch or setting up my new Wi-Fi network, you can check out the videos over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.